Welcome back to Wise Men Company, everyone. Ben here, and today we're going to be talking about the M1A yet again. I can't believe I'm doing another M1A video. This one in particular is the SOCOM variant. If you guys have been a part of Wiseman Company for a long time, you'll remember way back in the day, Noah and I did a video on the Scout version of the M1A, which received a wide variety of comments. That being said, the majority of the comments were all the M1A and 14 diehards out there that absolutely think and are convinced this gun came directly from the Almighty. And that's blasphemy. It didn't. It's not that good. It does some things well, but it's not the end all be all. You guys get so fanatical about this platform. Best service rifle ever made. Mm, wrong. A lot of you are saying by now, so why do you have two then? What's with the second one? Why did you get a SOCOM? Well, it was this or an AK. They do do some things really, really well. I know I talked a lot of a lot of spice and heat in the beginning of this video, but these platforms, they shine in certain areas. And again, they might not be the end all be all, but if I'm diversifying, diversifying my portfolio, I think this will make sense by the end of the video. So before we get into the reasons of why's and what they're good at and what they're not good at, let's talk about how this one's outfitted. There are some bells and whistles on it. Pick this one up from Palmetto State Armory. Had it shipped to AAA Guns and Ammo here in Florida. And this one has the black multicam dip or Cerakote. I'm actually not sure. It looks like dip, uh, not Cerakote. You can find these in a few other colors, multicam, OD green, tan, that Woodstock version is a walnut version. That's what I have the Scout in. Uh, but this one is in black multicam. Looks really, really cool. Looks great, actually. And I got, again, I got this from Palmetto State Armory. On the back here, this is probably the immediate point of interest for a lot of you. This is how I have my optic mounted. I have an ACO on here from Aimpoint. It's in a 30 millimeter ring, a very robust ring and it's sitting on top of a Sage International Picatinny rail that fits into the stripper clip section of the M1A. So you get your roll pin, and roll pin punch, punch out the stripper clip, dovetails right into the same spot, really tight fit, you gotta tap it in there, and then it has a set screw that you wind down into that pinhole where you took the roll pin out of. So it's a pretty stable, little platform it's just a short short piece of picatinny rail gets a nice low mount on the m1a gives that black hawk down vibe which that's what i was going for and you can pick these little pieces up for around i think 35 bucks i think i got it from botash or or botac um, you can get them for 35 bucks shipped and i thought the recoil from this gun would beat this little system i have right here up because it is stack tolerances but so far, so good. It's really holding true. Zero hasn't shifted. Nothing has come loose because I torqued everything to spec, put some Loctite on it, and uh, it has worked out really nice. I'm happy with how the optic sits on here. I was running the optic up front and RMR up here for a little while, but this front rail gets so hot because it's right on the barrel, and I was afraid I was going to cook any optic I put up there. So took that off went with this look which i like better and uh it's working out good moving forward using a surefire pressure pad plugged into this little scout up here this is going to be changed this is just a placeholder for the time being i need more lumens this light is just not cutting it and with how far back it is i'm getting some serious barrel shadow and i knew that was going to be the case uh, but i think if i can crank out some more light out of out of the flashlight up here i won't worry about the barrel shadow so much it is on a Halo Strategic Thorn Tail, which again is pushing that light as far up as I possibly can get. And uh, just use that pressure pad right there to activate it. Heat hasn't been a problem for the pressure pad. Nothing's melting. Nothing is malfunctioning. I do like this system quite a bit. And I think it's here to stay. The only thing that's going to be different is um, probably a different head on the light or a different light altogether. My preferred mags to run in this are 20 rounders. It does ship with a 10 rounder. And it is the 10 round is a little harder to load on the fly because it's just less surface area, less stuff to grab onto. And the M1A is a rock in magazine, so you stick the front corner in, rock it in until it clicks, and then run the charging handle on the side for the bolt to go forward, sending around into the chamber. 
This is a 16 and a quarter inch barrel for those of you that didn't know. And the end of the barrel is ported, which really does a great job mitigating recoil and muscle rise. I mean, it does a great job. Not so much on the concussion. The concussion is pretty stout, but a lot of you are gonna be like, who cares? That's not the point of this gun. And you're right, you're absolutely right. Chambered in 308, if I hadn't said it already, or 762 by 51. Uh, quick question for you guys while we're at it. Do you guys think 308 is going the way of the Dodo? Do you think that's kind of taking a back seat with all these new calibers coming out like 6.5 Creedmoor, 6.5 Grendel, 6 Arc? Is 308 kind of going on the same path as 40 Smith & Wesson? Let me know in the comments down below. There's a lot of 308 lying around, so it might take a while to uh, disappear off the face of the earth, but uh, it seems like it's just being outrun by a lot of these new calibers that have come out. Some of them not so new, some of them just been kind of pushed to the front, but let me know down in the comments what you think about 308. Okay, let's get into the whys now. Why did I get this? Is it my second one, huh? And I talked a, lot of, I talked a lot of trash in the beginning of this video. It was between this or an AK. The M1A or an AK. I was trying to diversify my portfolio. As we all know, ammo is ridiculous. I don't wanna just hunt for 5.56 and nine millimeter. I don't wanna be pigeonholed into those two calibers. So I was thinking, well, I'll get an AK. Uh, I can still, me personally, where I'm at, I can still find 7.62 by 39 fairly easily and 308 actually. And the price is, is higher than normal, but it's, it's not ridiculous. So I was thinking about it and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna go with the M1A SOCOM because I'm already highly invested in the magazines, have a bunch of magazines already, already and I had a ton of 308 lying around. So instead of getting an AK and having to get magazines, ammo, outfit it, I thought, eh, I'm just gonna get a shorter M1A and uh, play around with that for a little while. So that's what I did. And I gotta say, it was a great decision. Let's talk about the pros and cons of this platform. Where my head's at as far as the, the role this gun plays in my life. What it's not good at? Weight, modernization, and accuracy. Let's start with accuracy. This thing shoots about a minute of Honda Civic. It shoots better than that, but at best, this thing is a 3M MOA gun. I didn't get it for its accuracy. A lot of you out there say like, oh, M1A, like that's, that's the sniper, preferred sniper rifle. You can get them, get them so, my M1A match is so accurate. And the fact of the matter is these guns, comparatively speaking to what's available, aren't that accurate. They don't shoot sub MOA groups. That's okay. I don't need to shoot sub MOA groups. I didn't get it for that. I got it to do some other things. Weight, it's eight pounds. Yeah, it's heavy. Eight pounds unloaded, stripped down. And that's kind of the reason why I went with this kind of minimalist setup here. Not big old uh, LPVO on top, not a big old light laser foregrip or like a Sage chassis or something like that. I wanted to keep the weight down as best I could. And we're right now, we're at a right underneath a 10 pound gun, which is still kind of heavy, but that has its advantages in itself. It keeps recoil down, keeps me nice and strong and healthy. I can do curls with this thing, so I'm getting a workout while I'm on the range. Weight isn't a big deal in my mind, but weight is also something that you can't overlook when you're talking about the M1A platform. Upgrades, that's the other downside. It is kind of difficult to upgrade these guns. There is aftermarket support, not a ton though. There's not a lot out there because guns like the AR-15, the AK, the AR-10 have taken the lion's share of these companies that are making products for guns. They're, that's where all the money's at. So there's not a lot of company companies specifically making parts for the M1A that's gonna modernize it a little bit more. Now, that being said, I did find some parts that do work for this gun. It's not impossible. It's just a little, it involved a little bit more hunting for a gun, to build a gun that uh, is a little bit more ergonomic, a little bit more modern than just a standard M1A or M14 clone. All right, talked a lot of negatives, and if you made it this far in the video, thank you. Let's talk about why I got this, why I like it. The M1A, very reliable. This thing, you can feed it steel case, brass case, bunch of different grain weights and it just keeps chugging along. I mean, these guns are very reliable. Piston system platform. I 
I cannot say that these guns are not reliable because they just they just shoot everything. I've never had an issue with reliability. That's with this one and the one I previously, I, the one I had reviewed previously. It's they both run great. Magazines can be a little finicky if you get them dirty. I use the Checkmate mags, haven't had an issue, uh, but if they are sandy and gritty, they're just a little harder to load, load and then reload when you're when you're on the fly or trying to do it in a hurry. So not a big deal. Uh, but reliability all around has been top notch for the M1. I know I'm when I pick this up, it's gonna work. This gun is great at destroying stuff. I mean, this gun will just hit steel targets harder than 5.56, obviously, hits soft targets extremely hard, shoots through cars, no issue, through, shoots through cinder blocks, no issue. I mean, if you wanna destroy some stuff, this is the ticket. 308 has some mustard behind it and it will just turn cover into concealment. It's a ton of fun. Last but not least, these guns are a joy to shoot. They feel so mechanical when you're blazing away with them. You can feel the action sliding back and forth. You just feel the rhythm of the gun with the compensator on the front. It tames the muzzle rise a little bit. It is just a blast to shoot, pun intended. It is a awesome gun for anyone that picks it up and wants a unique experience. Anytime I hand this off to somebody to try out and they've never shot one, they come away with a smile on their face because it is a gun that you have to kind of work at to use. It's not going to just roll over and let you scratch its belly. It's got to take some, some TLC. You're going to have to put some work into it, build a relationship with it, uh, talk to its father before you take it out on the range, ask permission to take it out. It's just a gun that uh, requires a little bit more attention and that attention pays off because it's a ton of fun. All right guys, M1A SOCOM. This thing is pretty freaking fun. It's a joy to shoot, like I said. Uh, you'll see a lot more of this on the channel. I still need to add a contour sling to this. I'm gonna get a black contour sling. If you need a sling for your gun, go over to wisemencompany.com. We got a lot of slings over there. We have padded ones and we have uh, baseline two points that will get you squared away with a little bit better price point on those baselines. Uh, but just adding a different light to this and a sling, and I think I'm good to go. I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this, and I can't wait to let a lot of other people have a lot of fun with it. So any questions about this gun, this build, leave them in the comments down below. Let me know what you think about the M1A or the M14. <laughs> I think I know what you're gonna say, but I still wanna hear from you. Let's talk about it, talk with each other as well. Guys, thank you for watching. My name's Ben. Again, go over to wisemencompany.com. A lot of great gear over there. It supports us directly. Thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next video.